that's Sutton, and I'm Simply, and welcome back to the Purple Rain Podcast. Welcome back to episode 184 of the Purple Rain Podcast, the Ed Dixon episode, the Jermaine Lewis episode, the TJ Hushman Zada episode, and most recently, the Josh Oliver episode of the Purple Rain Podcast. Thank you all for coming through on this Monday evening. You can follow us on Instagram at the Purple Rain Podcast. Follow this guy on Instagram, on Twitter. On threads, you know, I think threads low key died already <laughs> at Sutton Death. You can follow me on Instagram at simplyas10.prod and on Twitter at simplyas10. And most importantly, our lovely, jubbly sponsor, Manscaped. Uh, I love watching UFC. I don't know if you watched this weekend. I did. Yeah. It was I, yeah. hell of a card. Hell of a, I went three Dang. for three on bets. That's never going to happen Ooh. again. <laughs> I saw Kevin Holland win, one of my favorites. I was hyped. Um, oh, you bet but, on Holland to win? Oh, yeah. And Pereira. Nice, Parlayed nice. them boys together. I was like, Ooh. Pereira was not losing. I mean, you know, I saw some people weren't happy with it, but uh, yeah. I was complaining. Uh, but Manscaped, seeing them, you know, in the ring and, and knowing we're sponsored with them really means a lot. So if you want to go on, on Manscaped and get yourself something nice, whether it be the Baudero deodorant, it is very hot out. And, you know, that's all I'm going to yeah. say. Uh, we're trying to help you out. Use code PRP, 20% off, and free shipping but how are you doing on this monday i'm doing well man i'm doing well i mean what we're i think 11 days away from ravens football again i mean like yeah. it doesn't get much better it. exactly exactly it just doesn't get much better than that time it feels like like for football fans diehard football fans it feels like it feels like christmas coming up yeah. as a kid you know you're just kind of like counting down the days to like the big day um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm excited, to say the least. And to hear the news that we heard today coming out of training camp, I'm even more excited to talk about that. So, uh, you know, like my guy Alex said, thank you guys so much for coming out to this episode 184 of the Purple Rain podcast. Uh, make sure you like the video. Please like the video. You know, leave a thumbs up on it. It helps us out a whole bunch. And also subscribe to the channel if you are new here because, listen, like we just said, Ravens games are 11 days away. So there's going to be a lot more of Ravens content coming our way to you guys. Now, as we always do in the Rain Gang uh, live streams, we bring up everybody who's in the chat. So we got our guy Chike in the chat says, afternoon guys, what's going on Chike? J Prime 235 in the house, what's going on my guy? Huddle it up films, that's our, our you know personal friend, Jason. We appreciate you for coming through, bro. And we will make, we'll be making some guest appearances mm-hmm. You know, on his show. So make sure you stay tuned. You know, make sure you stay tuned. We got some stuff coming along with him. Sports Gaming YouTube says, yo, what's up, Purple Rain Gang? What's going on, brother? Appreciate you for coming through. Manuel's Cod Channel. What's going on, man? Loaded Locks Gaming Trust. What's going on? JD Kill Switch. We got Boss giving you the shout out for three for three on the yeah. best. That's that's actually pretty clutch. That parlay is actually that was a good one. Who was the third hey, leg again? So I had I took Gaethje straight. I took Derek Lewis straight, uh, and then mm. I took. I wasn't expecting that. I honestly, me and Boz were texting, and I was like, "Should we?" And we're like, "Fuck it, let's do it." <laughs> and then yeah. it was Pereira and Holland together. I just didn't think Pereira was going to lose twice in a row, uh, right. especially. I mean, you know, losing it, get knocked out by Izzy, and then yeah. Well, I know that Pereira one. You were probably sweating, but the, the, that I'll be Gigi honest. knockout and that Derek Lewis <laughs> knockout had you had to be on the moon for those man those are crazy like, finishes. yeah uh that is probably one of my favorite cards of the year i mean take the betting out of it it was just very entertaining i'll be honest and then Derek lewis yeah. taking his pants off you know his oh, balls were hot. classic classic his, yeah. his balls were hot i mean swinging <laughs> it around yeah oh man it's just just what what a weekend <laughs> yeah love that love that um taquan is in the house says what's up rain gang sutton and alex Hey, Taquan, appreciate you for coming through. Uh, We got Brandon Wyatt in the building. What's going on, Brandon? And we got Cameron Hines in the building as well. What's going on? We appreciate you guys for pulling up to this episode of the Purple Rain Podcast. Again, make sure you guys like the video. Let's go ahead and get into some of what we came here to talk about today on this episode. Uh, So training camp is well underway. 
so much to the point where the players are now wearing pads to practice. So as of today, 31 July 2023, the Baltimore Ravens players are in pads and practicing, you know, in training camp. So uh, we're getting some different type, you know, types of news nowadays. Now, now that the uh, the pads are on, I think that is no surprise that the the news today was that the defense really shined bright. You know, like pads on, they're able to be more physical, really more hands on. Whereas opposed to you know uh, last week when there's no pads, they're not allowed to be as physical. So it's more so like showcasing the offense a little bit. So I think it's just kind of the defense is a little bit relieved to kind of finally really get their hands on guys. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, but w- what do you think about the uh, the news that came out today? What's, what really stood out to you? Okay, so I mean, we talked about it before. Uh, I have mentioned the defensive line. I think Justin Matabike had two sacks, Wood had a third if a play wasn't called dead. And I think this could be renamed from the Purple Rain podcast to the Justin Matabike fan club because that's really what we are, I think. I think we both rate him just as highly as each other, and we yeah. both think he's going to have a monster year. And just hearing that, uh, I guess a line that is, is, is really good, the Ravens line isn't just a bunch of you know five random guys, some studs on there. Uh, and him getting, you know, would be – Two sacks, which really should have been three, really makes me feel good. And then hearing the way Anthony Weaver was talking about Roger Washington, mm. yeah, getting those guys locked up is going to be something that's huge. Because I was a, I was a real big – I question Roger Washington after he had his off-the-field incident, but he's really you know stepped up and become just a true key piece on this line, and he'll have a big year, and he'll get paid. Uh, I know you want to talk about the defense too, so I'll just hand it off to you as well. Yeah, and kind of piggybacking off of what you were saying about Roderick Washington and what Anthony Weaver was saying about him. Um, you know, he had one sentiment he said about him. He said that uh, he doesn't think that anybody in the building works harder than Roderick Washington. And I think that definitely does speak volumes, especially considering, um, like you alluded to, like what he's coming off of with the off-the-field things that happened a couple seasons back um, and just kind of getting back to where he needed to be. And, you know, there was other reports of saying, like, he looks like a totally different player physically than, you know, when he first came into the league his first couple of seasons. So. Uh, just the maturity that we're, you know, hearing coming from him, really good to hear. And then also uh, Michael Pierce as well. Um, as you guys know, Michael Pierce uh, was supposed to start for us last year, but he had that, uh, you know, preseason mishap where he got hurt. He went down and, you know, we lost him for the season. So having him back and hearing that, you know, he's involved, he's he's looking good out there, that's, that's definitely more good news, especially considering the fact that we lost uh, Calais Campbell you know, who's a, a big veteran piece, who was a big veteran piece on that line uh, all last year. So now we're really looking at guys like uh, Roderick Washington and Justin Matavike, like we were talking about. But in terms of having a having a veteran uh, back there on that defensive line, I think Michael Pierce can definitely be that that kind of like a anchor, kind of an unsung hero, so to say, because we know what he can do stopping the run. And I definitely think we're going to need his presence. So uh, that's what I thought about the uh, the defensive line. But like I was telling you, Alex, before we went live, uh, the thing that really impressed me the most about what I heard today was the news about the linebackers and not just any of the linebackers, but especially the ones who line up on the outsides. You know, I, I, I like the news that I heard about them today. Um, Adafe Owe and David Ajabo both had some good, you know, good showings, good plays, good reps today. Uh, and I was telling Alex before we went live, like I know there's more Adafe Owe propaganda. And I was telling you guys last week on the show that like I, – I don't know how I feel about hearing it because we hear we always hear about OA terrorizing training camp and then we just don't really see that same production on the field on game day on Sundays. Um, but hopefully, you know, we can actually finally get that this year. Now that the main comment that they said about OA, and I don't know if you heard this, Alex, was that his bend looks a lot better. Yeah. Uh, and they were saying that you're gonna be able to tell what his what his um his signature pass rush move is this year. And they were saying like, okay, from so far from what we've seen, like his been getting around the edge of uh, left tackles and, you know, tackles has been looking better. He even got around uh, Ronnie Stanley on one rep today, which I found pretty impressive myself. But did you hear about that? Yeah, I saw the tweets about that and it did, you know, bring a little smile to my face. Going back on Michael Pierce real quick. Yeah. Uh, I, if I recall correctly, before he left us, uh, when he went to the Vikings, he would come to OTAs and he would fail the conditioning test, test every single time because he was not in shape. Yep. This year, not one person failed it, including Michael Pierce. He would come overweight. He would just come out of shape and he would fail it two or three times. And then he would start, you know, training camp late or you know any of the activities because he, he wasn't able to get on the field. Hearing that you know he passed it definitely shows that it's a different Michael Pierce that he's ready right. to uh, really 
really ramp things up. But going back to the edge rushers, yeah, hearing the OA, uh, just the propaganda, I, feed it, feed me more. I I need more of that because big Odafe OA truther right here. Yeah, I, I don't blame you. I mean, like like I was saying before too. I mean, I'd rather hear that he's doing well than he's struggling. You know, in training yeah. camp. So at the end of the day, that's how I feel about it. But. Uh, I mean, the, the biggest thing that, that really excites me is that, you know, we've been talking about at length this whole offseason, how good this defense is and how there really aren't a whole lot of holes. And today we kind of got confirmation or affirmation, whatever you want to call it, that the two, arguably two of the biggest holes on our defense, which would would have been, you know, a defensive line uh, minus a Calais Campbell, uh, and then also an edge rushing group, pending minus a veteran like a Justin Houston. And then you've got two young guys like Owe and Ojabo. So there were question marks there. So just the fact that both of those position groups, you know, shine bright today and they look really good was definitely promising information um, that they gave us. So yeah. uh, overall, a good day from today's practice, I would say. I, I guess we can also touch on the stadium practice that took yeah. place over the weekend. Um, what were some of the highlights you took away from that? So actually, I want to. I have one more uh, tidbit oh, sure, to sure. talk about. Yeah, yeah, from it's from Baltimore Beatdown. Uh, it was Melvin Gordon got thrown back into wide receiver Tylen Wallace as he was supposed to lead block on the sweet play by rookie linebacker Trenton Simpson. The yeah, rookie had a couple of physical that, plays, yeah. but none were more impressive in the block denial. Uh, yeah. Melvin Gordon is not Justice Hill. He is not a small, you know, running back. Melvin Gordon is built. Yeah. In fact, Trenton Simpson, rookie second rounder from Clemson, threw him into Tylen Wallace. Shows me how physical Trenton Simpson is. And if Bowser is to, you know, still be out, I mean, that's just going to build well for Simpson. He'll be getting more playing time. So that right there stood out to me because I kind of was like a wow. Like, I didn't say wow out loud, but in my head I was like, wow. Like, doing that, you know, in the first day of pads is kind of setting the tone for, for the rest of the guys out there. But for the uh, the stadium practice, I wasn't able to make it, which really pissed me off. But I got to say, Odell. Odell, I mean, he he made the one catch, you know, going to the ground, and then there was a the one touchdown catch that got called back. But just seeing the swagger he brings, I mean, it's going to make that whole receiving course so much better. Uh, Lamar yeah. was looking just shifty as ever. I'm not going to lie, you know, getting out of the pocket. Uh, and there was this one play where I don't know if it was Lamar or Huntley. They checked it off to Gus Edwards. And seeing Gus Edwards run full speed for about five yards, who in their right mind wants to tackle Augustus Edwards running downhill? I just thought about that watching them. Like, that is a scary sight. I really hope that we get to use him more in the passing game because we saw it when he was healthy in 2020. He actually he was a threat in the passing game. Um, yeah. I want to see him utilize more. Hopefully, Munkin does that. But what do you got? Uh, no, I mean, I think you made a, uh, a really good point about Trenton Simpson. Uh, and I want to bring up a comment from our guy Jason. It says Simpson is a physical force. He just needs to get his GPS right. So basically saying, um, you know, he just needs to really figure out the game of football and know where to be um, and, you know, get to his spot. So, we, I mean, we kind of said the same thing about Patrick Queen. And I think that he's come along a little, you know, nicely in terms of, a, you know, kind of doing that. So let me see. He also says Odell's a force multiplier. Wait till he cranks it up to 100. Yeah, I also thought you made a good point, Alex, about the swagger that Odell brings to the team. Uh, so just on top of his, you know, the physical ability, also just the um, just the height and just the juice that's going to be in that huddle between a Lamar Jackson and Odo Beckham Jr., uh, Zay Flowers, Rashad Bateman, like all of those guys are going to want to get it done. Hopefully, the, I mean, the hope is, and I'll just throw this out there, hope, the hope is J.K. Dobbins can also be a part of that. But who knows? What, the fingers crossed, exactly. But like our guy Jason said, he is a force multiplier. I, I do think he gives this offense just overall more confidence um, and more juice. So, yeah, that's a good point. Both good points there. Let me see. Go ahead, bro. Yeah, I'm just trying to think. I Like I said, I wasn't able to make it. Um, I know Tucker hit one of the field goals from, like, 60 yards. I mean, we're kind of used to that, to be honest. Um, I think – I mean, from DB wise, I mean, really couldn't do a lot. It, those stadium practices are more geared towards the offense. You know, the fans are there. The fans yeah. don't want to see the offense it's just duds. They want to see touchdowns, big plays. So, I kind of took a lot of it with a grain of salt. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it was seemed like a fun time. I think twenty thousand people were there, and the heat index was like one hundred two. 
So it cool. goes to show you how loyal Ravens fans are. I mean, they sold yeah. 50,000 tickets, they said, and 20,000 going on a day like that, and I heard traffic was terrible. Come on now. This loyal fan base. Yeah, super loyal fan base. Um, to Quan Christian says, don't forget about Mark. Mark Andrews has been forgotten. Like this whole offseason, I feel like. You know, we're talking about all the shiny new receivers and, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. you know, th- there's just Mark Andrews left. And, hey, I'm fine with that. I'm leave him. Forget about Yeah, him. I mean, and all the beat writers have been, you know, saying that Lamar Jackson, his favorite target is still Mark Andrews. Like that has not changed. So, uh, yeah, I mean, it's going to be interesting when, when push really comes to shove this season and we're going to have to get it done through the air who he kind of gravitates towards in terms of like, you know, who gets the most targets uh, down the stretch. So th- that, that'll that be so, man, I cannot wait for this season, man. Just just watching yeah. this offense and seeing where the <laughs> ball goes. Like anybody who gets the ball, like in this offense, I'm going to be excited to see what they do with the football. It's just like, it's just one of those, one of those rosters, man. So yeah. 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 Really can't forget. About I, say I, like, though. I mean, like, mm. like he's been doing his thing too. Uh, Heard good things about Charlie Collar blocking. Yeah. Um, I mean, we, I don't want to sit here and sound like a Cowboys fan and say it's our year, but the amount of talent that we have, uh, I haven't been this excited in a while. Yeah. Because, I, I mean, I'm going to go even probably before 2019 because I wasn't expecting us to be that good. Right. I was expecting us to make the playoffs. I wasn't expecting us to win 14 games. Yeah. Yeah. I'm very excited. Man. I'm just trying. I, I got to keep, keep, keep a level head though, and just stay grounded. There's a reason why they sold that many tickets for a training camp session. Like it's... fifty thousand for a training camp. Like yeah, not a game, practice. Practice Insane. exactly. Insane. Uh, Black Daniels in the house here. What's going on, Black Daniels? Says running back depth chart. Go. I think Gus should always be one. Should have been one. Me too. Gus deserves it. I mean, Gus, what? can't Gus do when it comes to the running back position? I mean, he can run between the tackles. He can bounce it out to the outside. He can run somebody over. He can catch the ball out of the backfield. He can catch the ball up the field as a receiver. We've seen him do it before. See that Giants game from a couple years back. I mean, listen, man, this guy is the complete package. So I definitely think that he should be, I I agree with you. He should be running back number one in in J.K. Dobbins' absence. Yeah. I mean, yeah, and then I mean, Dobbins and Gus one A one B. I wish Gus would get more, but he's always kind of the second half, the bruiser, you know, to wear down the defenses. Um, yeah. And then as for three, I want to say Justice Hill, but it's gonna be Melvin Gordon uh, with that vet experience. Justice Hill four, and then Keaton Mitchell five. So I want Keaton Mitchell to make the team, and depending what's going on with J.K., he very well could, uh, but he has to absolutely ball out. And, and get on Harbaugh's good side. Don't be, don't be a Tyson Williams. Yeah, he he got thrown in the doghouse pretty quickly. Um, Oscar says, "How is Gus Edwards' speed? I mean, he's not like a, a burner. He's not going to take the top off of your defense if he gets to the second level. Uh, but I mean, I, I'd say his speed is is sneaky. You know, they call him the bus, but like, he's very he's a very like they say north south runner. So he gets up field so quick because he doesn't waste time." Uh, going laterally a whole lot, you know, so in, in that way, he is the speed. The speed is there, but just in a different way, if that makes yeah. sense, you know, because he's more of a north south runner. He had a couple of nice runs last year. I think the Falcons game, he had some nice ones. The Bucks game, he, he I think he like got cramps there in one of his runs. It was a real nice one. Hmm. Um, I mean, and then he'll, he'll have a full offseason, healthy training. Just going to be better this year. Yeah, I mean, that's why we were so looking forward to J.K. Dobbins because he got the knee cleaned up. He looked better when he came back from that. And then, you know, the whole dispute's going on. Oscar also says, I hope we snap the preseason winning streak, but therefore go undefeated in the regular season. <laughs> oh, so, I mean, I know how streak. you feel about this preseason streak. <laughs> this streak, I forgot. Oh, my <laughs> God. You know, it's crazy because, like, with my soccer team, they lost in the preseason. I was like losing my head over it. I was like, I was actually pissed off about preseason. I look at the Ravens. I'm like, I thought they lose. Let's get this dumbass streak over with. But uh, at this point, it's whatever. Like, as long as like Harbaugh is smart with who he plays, and then I, I really could care less about it. Yeah. 
Yeah. Um, okay. All right. So other news coming out of training camp. Um, there was also Geno Stone uh, that got shaken up today. Uh, hurt the ankle. I think he got mixed up in a pile today or something like that. Hurt the ankle. So I don't think it's anything too serious, according to what Harbs was saying. So we'll continue to monitor that. But uh, definitely going to need him for sure. Yeah. Big Geno Stone guy right here. I saw another thing is that Arthur Millett had a diving pass breakup against wide receiver Dante Dimas Jr. I know it's an undrafted free agent he's going up against, but seeing him in what first or second practice, you know, already getting his hands on the ball, making a play, bodes well for him. I said, you know, to, to push for, for some snaps. Uh, and then this too, during a seven on seven on a play that was extended by Lamar Jackson, he threw a ball to Odell. That was swatted by Marlon Humphrey that somehow managed to be caught by Beckham and the crowd loved it. Mm. Yeah. I mean, you know, it was fun about um, some, I guess some conversation leaked between Lamar Jackson and Odo Beckham Jr. And actually, no, it, it didn't leak. Lamar said this himself. I remember he said this in an interview last week. He said that uh, when he was talking to Odell back when they first got him, he was saying that they had conversations and Odell would tell him like, yeah, if you just throw it up in my direction, I'm going to go get it. Like, and if I can't go get it, I'm going to bat it down. Like, I'm going to make sure that, you yeah. know, there's no interception, things like that. Uh, so that play that you just referenced is a good example of that. Like, a guy who doesn't quit on the play, you know, if the ball is in his vicinity, he's going to do his damnedest to go ahead and get that football and bring in the reception. So, you know, just super exciting to hear what we're hearing from, you know, Odo Beckham Jr., to see what we're seeing from him. Uh, but also I want to give a shout-out to uh, – this is kind of switching the gears a little bit. We talked about the defensive line mm-hmm. earlier, uh, but we didn't mention Travis Jones. No. Travis Jones is also looking good as well. And Travis Jones going into his uh, second season, very excited to see what he has to offer, man. I was super excited to see what he could do last year. Didn't really get as much burn as I wanted him to, but with the absence of Calais Campbell, man, next man up. So he's going to get a lot more reps and super excited to see what he can offer, man. And, you know, let me just finish off that line. So let me get some love to Brent Urban, uh, a true pro. I think mm-hmm. he made a play in, in practice today, too, and, and the team loved it. He, yeah. he hit, had a couple of plays last year, a couple of batted balls, getting those big Canadian mitts up. We have just some 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 guys on that line that, you know, not names that, you know, not an Aaron Donald, not a Chris Jones, but guys that can produce, uh, guys that, you know, I think are going to make a nice little impact this year. So I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. Oh, another thing from that stadium practice. Did you see that Lamar play where he like scrambles all around the pocket and like cuts up field for I what mean, would have been a first down? Yeah. Just that Lamar being Lamar. I mean, and the fact that he got around Owe on that play, like a hustling Owe. I and mean, we know Owe is known for his speed above all else. I mean, he may not yeah. get the most sacks, but he can close out on a quarterback who's trying to escape the pocket. I mean, we've seen that. I think we saw it in his very first game against the Raiders, I want to yep. say, that was against Derek Carr I'm bringing him down. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, just the fact that he was able to kind of easily get around him while still looking downfield, seeing what he could do. I mean, Lamar Jackson is just absolutely special, man. Uh, in terms of escapability, I think he's second to none in in the league, right? Would you say that? Yeah. Yeah. Top three that... quarterbacks in terms of escapability. Go. I mean, you got to put Lamar at one. There's really no second. Um, I mean, Josh Allen – he escapes, but his body helps him a lot, too. So I think I have to put him up there. I mean, that counts, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I saw a Burrow did to us last year. I'm like, yeah. I, like I, Burrow. I was going to put Burrow, yeah. Uh, Mahomes has to be up there. I mean, the thing with Mahomes, too, is, like, he's not known to run, but the, that motherfucker can scramble. He and and, right. and and it and he has some speed that just he doesn't use. But, yeah, I mean, I think Lamar is one of one, like Black Daniel says. Black Daniel um, says one of one in escapability. And then also today – Nelson Aguilar, uh, it was the okay. Ravens were facing a third and two on the 11 yard line. Lamar Jackson floated one on a fade to Aguilar, who came down with the ball over Brandon Stevens. Mm. Yeah, that's that's definitely good. Uh, good to hear about uh, Nelson Aguilar. But uh, I think I also heard John Harbaugh say today that, you know, he's kind of like a uh, long rangey type of receiver. Uh, 
which is something that I could say we need for sure. I just don't know how many opportunities he's going to get in this offense, you know, because as, as much as we're talking about the passing game, we're still going to be run first. I think we're still going to be a run first offense. And, you know, when we do pass the opportunities for a Nelson Aguilar to be the one who creates separation and gets the look and the nod from Lamar Jackson for him to throw the ball his way, it's just going to be few and far between. I mean, if we're going over under two targets a game for Nelson Aguilar. He's got to make his opportunities. Yeah. But I'm, yeah. I mean, like, I, I hated it at first, but after, you know, getting Odell and, and signing Zay Flowers, I, I like it even that much more. And what I like is that he's making these opportunities since Bateman's not there. He's doing what he can to show that he, he's going to ball. So um, I've come around to it a lot. I'll be honest with you. Uh, Black Daniels actually asked, he said, what's the word on Black? I think he was wearing 81 in stadium practice, had a nasty catch Saturday. Well, today, wide receiver Tariq Black called back-to-back passes that were highlight plays. The first was a back shoulder catch against cornerback Jalen Armour Davis for 20 yards. Next play, he ran a streak route, and Josh Johnson dropped it in the bucket for a 30-yard completion. So, if hopefully he balls out and gets a chance somewhere else, because he's not going to make the team here. I hate to say it. Um, just put some good film out there and Hopefully, get picked up or maybe on our practice squad. Who knows? Yeah, it kind of reminds me of like Shamar Bridges from last. How did that on the day, too? Pre-season. You did. You said what? Shamar Bridges had a touchdown today in practice. Oh, nice. Nice. Yeah. Um, let's see. See what else What else you guys are saying here. Thoughts on Demas Jr.? I wanted to work out because he went to Maryland. Uh, just, a, just a long shot. It's. Any other year, a receiver would have had a good chance to make the, uh, the roster as undrafted. But this year, man, like, Proche is probably not going to make it, who was a lock the past couple of years, you know. Kylan Wallace might not make it unless he balls out on special teams and shows out in the preseason. So unless this guy puts up, like, 15, 20 catches in the preseason, it's going to be hard for him to make the team. But I, I want him to. UMD guy. Yeah. Manuel's COD channel says Marlon being mossed by OBJ. Not a surprise at this point, considering Marlon never practices with elite talent at wide receiver. I don't think he was. Was he, I don't think he was mossed. But I about to say when was that at the stadium practice? Did you? Because it wasn't today. Because it was tipped today. Yeah. And then okay. Odell just kind of stuck with the concentration and, and you know played to the whistle and caught the ball. But yeah, yeah. I mean, iron sharpens iron. As long as yeah. came back. Let's see. Chike says, who do you think realistic will, <laughs> realistically will play in preseason? Definitely going to see, I think when it comes to offense, you're going to see uh, the left guard, Luke, uh, Lulu. What do we what do we say we're calling him? L- Lulu. Uh, Lulu. Lulu. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, yeah him. Uh, I definitely think we're going to see shades of Zay Flowers. Not a whole lot, I would say, but shades, like a little bit. And then also Keaton Mitchell. I think we're going to see a healthy yeah, dose of him just to see what he, yeah, see what he has to I'll offer. Go, I'll go Melvin Gordon as well. Yeah. I think, yeah. I mean, yeah. Uh, Kolar, likely, I think they'll get some reps. Yeah, they'll definitely get reps. I think Aguilar will play, play some. Um, but yeah, I I don't think Odell will. I don't think Lamar will. I, I want them to get like a driver two in, but at the same time, I don't. I just don't want to start off, you know, rusty, but I don't want to downplay the Texans because we happened against the Jets last year, but we started off rusty yeah. a little bit against the Jets. So we, it wasn't the best first half. We turned it up the second the second half. It wasn't. You're right. You're right. Uh, no, I mean, I, I agree. It's just, I just don't. It's just not worth. We have risk, PTSD. Man. We have PTSD. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's not worth. And risk. we we play at FedEx Field again this year too. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we all know what happened last time we played there. Appreciate it. Not not fun. Not fun. Um, for defense, though, I think I think Rockison's going to be be playing. Trent uh, Simpson. Yeah. Well, I mean, uh, Stevens, I don't know if he'll be at safety or at corner. I definitely I think, think Hamilton will get some play time. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Armour, Davis, and Pepe. 
they've I mean, said they Armour Davis is looking better this uh, this season as well. Yeah, they got to show out. Um, yeah, yeah. I mean, everybody except I'd say Roquan Queen, Humphrey, Marcus Williams. Right. I think right. I th- I remember last year Queen wanted to play, but I think Harbaugh pulled him out. Um, yeah, I don't think Queen will have any problem not playing this season. Yeah, yeah, preseason. Uh, let's see. Black Daniel says, realistic perspective on Melvin Gordon. Is his success contingent on JK playing or not? I think so. I saw somebody compared to the the Mike Davis signing from last year, and that really didn't, didn't sit right with me because he, he really didn't do a lot last year. Kenyon Drake did a lot last year for us, who I, who I would have taken over Melvin Gordon, honestly. Yeah, it depends on what Melvin Gordon does early on in the season. If J.K. Dobbins does decide to kind of, you know, hold out or whatever, uh, then, you know, of course, Jake, not J.K. Dobbins, but uh, Melvin Gordon will get a lot of touches. And if he does not fumble, which is kind of like the biggest thing clouding over him going into this season, like a lot of people are looking back at his five fumbles from last season and saying like, hey, why do we even have this guy? Uh, but if he protects the football, you know, and he actually eats up, uh, grass like green grass on the field like good yardage like we can we can I can definitely see I said it the other week man I think that Melvin Gordon might be able to be the next Mark Ingram for us we might be able to get one good year out of him one good season out of him I'm just that's that's my we, prediction we made Kenyon Drake look good last year I'm not gonna lie when you when you look back and think he, he scored a good amount of touchdowns for us broke exactly. off some runs yeah, it's just those fumbles scare me. I hope yeah. they're doing a bunch of drills in training camp. And if you've went, please let me know, like, of them trying to punch it out or them trying to hit it out because we cannot have wasted possessions. Short field, that, that just can't happen. We want to see this offense as much as we can on the field. Absolutely. All right, we'll go ahead and take a couple more questions from you guys here before we go ahead and wrap today's show. Um, Alex, yes, you said you watched the uh, the UFC card, right? Yep, whole whole main card. Let's talk about what it. did. What did you think about what did you think about the Justin Gaethje and Dustin Poirier fight? Did you watch their first fight? I did not, but they actually had it on ESPN, and I was like uh-huh. able to catch some of it. And I saw how like it was like one of the like the fight of the year that year, and I was like, yeah, and that, yeah. that fight was just so crazy, and it's just. Justin Gaethje has he's come such a long way, man. When he first got into the UFC, he was just like a brawler, just wants to like take your head off, like doesn't really care about defense or like being technical or anything like that. But after he lost to Dustin Poirier the first time, like he like switched coaches, switched his whole game plan, training camp, things like that, uh, and just came back just way more dialed in, way more technical. And you could see that in uh, the um, the Dustin Poirier fight the second time around. Got him with the same kick that Leon Edwards got Kamaru Usman with. <laughs> Uh, the same kick that Charles Oliveira got, um, Benil Daryush with a couple weeks back. It's it's crazy, man. That, that that right high kick is going crazy in the UFC right now. Yeah, and Usman was in the crowd, which I thought was like really it was funny. Yeah. He definitely had to get some you know, PTSD from that. Uh, yeah, I wasn't expecting that honestly. I w- I thought Poirier was gonna win. Uh, cause I remember last time I watched Gaethje, I think he, he got his ass whooped. It, it really? wasn't pretty. Yeah, it was. I don't know who he fought, but I remember I saw him lose. It wasn't mm-hmm. pretty. Um, He's really only ever, ever gotten whooped by, I believe it was Poirier and Eddie Alvarez beat him. Uh, that was years back, though. Uh, yeah, Khabib beat, beat him. Who else beat it him? Was, it was Oliveira. Oliveira beat him. Oh, that's I watched him. Awesome. He didn't get he didn't get smoked in the Oliveira fight though. Like but he, I remember he lost. I remember he lost, lost for sure. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And I was and I, you know, but that was that was something watching him knock him out. And I kind of I, I stood up, started you know, because when you got money on the line too, it's a little bit means a little bit more. Oh yeah, for but sure. yeah, no, it was it was fun. But yeah, um, I wasn't expecting Derek Lewis to win. I'll tell you that because oh my goodness, man, didn't they get moved up to the main card as well? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, man, and Derek Lewis, like that was that was his fastest knockout, thirty three seconds, uh, and then also, a lot of people don't know this, but that was Derek Lewis's last fight on his contract with the UFC. Yeah. So he's literally going out 
on a crazy win, like flying me, knockout, like TKO, whatever. <laughs> uh, and either the UFC is going to re-sign him or maybe he goes to one of the, these other promotions, maybe PFL with Francis Ngannou and makes yeah. a boatload of money over there fighting Francis. Who knows? But, ah, man, definitely happy for Derek Lewis, man. And then, like we said before, the whole balls is hot thing, takes off the, the trunks. Uh, <laughs> How it wasn't was even playing to the knee, like he say, he's – yeah, I, I I don't know if it, I mean, do you think that was planned? Do you think that was in the game plan to throw in there, or just think he was just like, well, you watch a lot more theory, than me? So, the, the theory is that, I mean, well, because Derek Lewis is historically known not to have the best gas tank, so the fact that you know it was a three round fight, which is standard, but they were fighting in Utah, which is like 4,000 feet above elevation, so obviously there's a lot less oxygen up there, so like it's you get tired a lot quicker. And for a big guy like Derek Lewis, like if he was going to go into the second and third rounds, like he wasn't probably going to have anything left, you know, to beat that guy if he was still standing yeah. in front of him. So I think he kind of knew he had to make something happen quick before, you know, he got tired. So that's what he did. And it was really cool to, uh, to watch. Yeah. So uh, we do have a super chat donation. This one coming from our guy, Chike. Always coming through with the love, man. We appreciate you ma- making it rain here on episode 184 of the Purple Rain podcast. Chike says, did you see the new Mission Impossible movie? I, have I did not. I have I not seen any Mission, Impo- Mission Impossible. I didn't even know there was a new one out. Did it just come out or something? Like, I'm not too sure. I've only heard about Barbie and, and Oppenheimer recently when it comes to movies. Go so. You got it. Telling you. Got yeah, you were telling me they were both good, so I definitely got to yeah. go see them. Yeah. Um, but thank you so much for your super chat donation, Chike. We appreciate you as always. And then Manuel's College Channel says, which wide receivers will make it besides Joystick, Odell, Bateman, and Aguilar? Doof. Uh, for returning purposes. For sure. Um, I say Doof and Wallace. I think Wallace is going to show, like special teams-wise as a gunner, uh, why he should make it. And you know Harbaugh loves special teams. I don't know, though. I mean... Prochet, I feel like they would lean towards Prochet. One, because he has been, you know, performing pretty well in training camp so far. He's been catching the passes that come his way. But also, Prochet has kind of been there and done that in a lot of, like, big situations. No, he didn't come up with the biggest of plays in a lot of these situations. But he's been on the field for some pretty important times when, you know, our our wide receiving room was was kind of um, kind of struggling. You know what I mean? So... I think they would they would kind of lean his his way in terms of uh, veteran experience things like that, but I still am a Tylen Wallace truther just like yourself. So I would love to see them lean Tylen Wallace, but in, in terms of what I think they'll do, I think they'll lean James Prochet. I wouldn't be mad at that. I mean, perfect truther here. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Okay. So we're gonna go ahead and leave it there. Listen, if you're part of the hashtag replay gang and you didn't watch this episode live, we still appreciate you guys. We love you guys just as much. Make sure you leave your questions down below in the comment section because we will get to those as we always do. Uh, make sure you guys like the video and subscribe to the channel if you are new. Once again, you can follow us on Instagram at the Purple Rain Podcast, like you see down below. You can go on manscape.com. And get any product you want on that website. You can stack them up, get as many things as you want, add it to your cart. And then at checkout, use our code PRP. Guess what? You're going to save yourself 20% off. Plus, you're going to get free international shipping. So I don't care if you're shipping it from, from Canada to China, from Russia to, to, to Africa. It does not matter. It's going to be free no matter where you're doing it from. And, of course, the good old United States. So we appreciate you guys. You guys have been rocking out with us and our sponsor for a while now. Manscaped.com, use our code PRP. You can find me on Twitter or Instagram at Sutton Def, just like you see right there. And then this guy over here, you can find him on Twitter at SimplyAS10, on Instagram at SimplyAS10.prod, and on TikTok, which is my personal wow. favorite social media site of his. It's going to be at SimplyAS10. <laughs> Simple as that, right? So, but I guess we can't call it Twitter anymore. It's called X now, right? You know, it sucks because not to get personal, I actually I have one tattoo and I have an X for Ken, the Roman numeral. Mm. And now it looks like I have like the Twitter X on my chest. Oh so yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. Um it, it sucks. It's bad timing. I, I it's like I it's, I promise you, Roman, it's not so simply AS ten, aka Elon's homeboy. <laughs> Absolutely. Not. 
not, I, I am an Elon Musk hater. I'll tell you that. Mm. I am. Are you really? Yeah, I'm not the biggest fan of him. No. Yeah. Hey, I didn't know that. Yeah. I, think, I don't know. There's the whole Twitter stuff and we'll talk about it. I don't want to, I don't want to put it on here. It's, we'll talk about it after. I'll tell you. I'll tell you. Okay. All right. Uh, we appreciate you guys for coming through. Boz giving a shout out to the Replay Gang. Uh, listen. We love you guys. We will catch you guys in the next episode. And with that being said, I'm going to let my guy Alex take us out. Thank you for coming through episode 184 of the Purple Rain Podcast. And as always, stay positive, test negative. And never, ever, ever forget, even on the rainiest of days, to call God. It's been episode 184 of the Purple Rain Podcast. We're going to catch you guys in the next one.